Hello, my name is Steve Atami, and I'm the Chief Empowerment Officer of Global Brigades. And today I'm here to go over the organizational structure of our organization. Uh, so, Global Brigades. In order to do this, I wanted to first kind of give a context of the history of how Global Brigades evolved. Um, so, Global Brigades actually started with Global Brigades in Honduras. And, but more specifically, uh, we started as a branch, as a department of Sociedad Amigos de los Niños. For four or five years, from 2002 to 2007, we operated as a department within their organization, helping run their medical brigades. Uh, Sociedad Amigos de los Niños is a very reputable non Honduran nonprofit. It's raised more than 40,000 Honduran children uh, and also ran uh, medical relief work in the communities. One of those children was one of the other co-founders of Global Brigades, um, Kike Rodriguez, uh, who set up that department within uh, Sociedad and eventually split off to become Global Brigades in Honduras, the nonprofit. So how we started, uh, some of the first groups for Global Brigades came from the USA. Uh, Marquette University, USC, uh, University of Michigan. These first two groups basically set up fund, uh, bank accounts from their university, mobilized students, uh, and sent the money directly down to that department of Sociedad Amigos de los Niños in Honduras. Uh, but after a few years of operating like this and pressure from not only the donors uh, for people that want to get tax receipts for making these contributions for the medical work that we were doing, uh, universities for wanting to create uh, a professional a legal entity established in the United States that was taking responsibility for all the things that were happening in the country, uh, and then also from an accounting and professional perspective to make sure that uh, we are keeping uh, track of those funds in the United States and that we are professionally growing the organization and, and holding and being accountable for uh, what is happening uh, on the ground. So we, in 2007, 2008, we registered as Global Reads uh, Inc., but later become Global Reads USA, uh, which, uh, it, which we received our 501c3 nonprofit status the year later uh, in 2008. And we started collecting funds from all of uh, the, the students across the United States in one bank account sharing one 501c3 status, which is really, really critical when you look at the evolution of our organization. Uh, we leveraged a technology to do that. We leveraged uh, Empower.org, and we leveraged just this idea of creating all of our chapters and putting them under one technological roof and under one social networking site uh, so that they could reach out to their donors. Um, the funds would go to the chapters um, from a digital perspective, but we, it ultimately was going to our registered 501c3. And what's different about that model versus other organizations is that other organizations, without naming names, have a, you know the blank chapter of Los Angeles, the blank chapter of New York, the blank chapter of Vancouver. Each uh, each of those may have their a separate five one c three status or a charitable status. Well, the Vancouver one would be a Canadian one, but the the L A and the New York chapters would have their own uh, their own chapters, their own five one c threes, which would require their own audits, which would require their own accounting teams, which would require their own administrative teams, their own operations, their own executive director. And this is the trend that most nonprofits that over the last, the most large institutional or larger nonprofits over the last, that have established themselves over the last hundred years in the United States operate under. Uh, and it's why they have a very difficult time running at very low, at low uh, administrative costs uh, as it related to contributions is because they, yes, they're very decentralized and they've grown and they've had chapters be able to latch on to their mission. But there, it doesn't abide to a lot of efficiency because they have to, they aren't sharing uh, very many of their administrative costs, and oftentimes they're actually competing over various uh, local donations and local funds and support. So, Global Gates flipped that model on its head through technology, through Empower.org, and and really now operate our over 400 chapters across North America and Europe uh, using the Empowered systems, and then leveraging what we call the association. So, what is the association? So, from 2009 to 2010, other students from other countries approach Global Brigades and, and said, hey, we want to set up this in our country too. Uh, and so in the process of doing that, we needed to set up a system that would make sure that the programming and the, what they were working toward in country was consistent. Uh, we also wanted to make sure that as we grew to other programming countries outside of Honduras, to Ghana and Panama, that also those, those communities had an equal voice to the students and had an, a centralized way to communicate the challenges and opportunities that each program had, and we can improve together as a, a collective organization. Otherwise, you know, we may have a group from Ireland say, you know, we really want to go to Haiti, and we want to do, uh, we want to build homes, which is an awesome cause. 
nothing wrong with that, but it isn't in line with the strategic uh, vision of the organization of global brigades, and it goes away from the holistic model that we've developed in our country. So if you haven't already, and I'll, I'll spare you the, all of the programming uh, discussion, but if you go to our model, learn about uh, our approach in the communities, please read that on the website. But essentially, um, we take a very family to family, community by community approach to sustainable development. And it's not conducive to having 30 to 40 programming countries. In each of these, these countries that we do work in, we have a, a very high level uh, te um, technical infrastructure and local professionals and employees that manage projects and manage relationships with communities in between all of the brigades. It is a very um, costly but also um, investment in local infrastructure uh, so that, that we are a more sustainable organization and that the students aren't just doing one-off uh, development work and leaving, but that we create year-round partnerships and have year-round people working here um, in the communities all the time. Uh, so that was extremely, uh, one of the main reasons, actually, we created Global Reads Association. And so who makes up Global Reads Association? Global Reads Association is made up of one representative from each of the countries that Global Brigades operates or has operations, from our programming countries to our grant-making countries. And uh, most of them, of which, especially in North America and Europe, are made up of, of students. They each have uh, Canada, UK, Ireland, Switzerland, Germany, and the US each have their independent board of directors. Uh, they each have their own legal entity with their own charitable status. The Canadian one is coming soon, I promise. Um, but they each have uh, those operations and then send a representative to sit at the association board to help make uh, those decisions across all, all of the countries for the collective movement. Um, so the other aspect of this that's not mentioned here is in, that is really critical to the essence of Global Brigades and the student-led movement is the campus chairperson position. The campus chairperson people are uh, elected representatives from each of the universities Global Brigades has that help make those programmatic decisions and votes. So that any resolution that, and any uh, new direction or strategy that the association comes up with must be voted on also by the campus chair people. And so that, that those students have the opportunity to provide feedback on the programming uh, before we implement it and further adapt it to the communities and get the community buy-in. Um, so the likewise, the chair people can also propose uh, ideas to the association or to the respective entities for us to come. So it's a two-way it's a two-way street. So either the association or uh, an idea may come out of the Panama office. So, so give an example. Um, say the Panama team wants to change environmental brigades uh, to really focusing on permaculture instead of doing uh, latrines. They would come up with the idea, they would present it to the association, the association would potentially pass that board, then they would pass it on to the campus chair people, the campus chair people would approve, and it would get implemented in the, into the communities. Vice versa, a campus, uh, one of the medical brigades uh, chapters at Penn State may say, you know what, we have this really great idea of how to improve medical brigades. They would run it to their campus chairperson. The campus chairperson uh, would uh, talk about it amongst the campus chairperson call. They may vote on saying, yes, we want to do this. It would get approved by the association. And then we would get final buy-in from the, the community uh, and the in-country teams and to make those, those bonds. So that's how decisions get made within Global Brigades. Uh, and that's how we engage the campus chair people and the students and community members in making those joint, uh, joint things together. So one of the really unique things about Global Brigades and why we can choose to make decisions like this and make decisions like this is that we don't have any outside institution coming in and telling us how to operate our movement. Uh, it's nearly entirely funded by students uh, from North America and Europe that are contributing to these projects that we're doing uh, overseas in, in, in our programming country. Therefore, all of the decisions that we make, we only really have two main stakeholders. We have the community members and we have the students. Those are the two stakeholders of global, uh, the, be the beneficiaries or stakeholders of global brigades that that matter most to us. That is that is our support. Those are our those are the people that we need their feedback and to and to to build the will and to implement the will of, of those collective of collective teams. And that comes through conversations. It comes through dialogue. It comes through going down and experiencing in country to have those conversations. We the association is just a means to to manifest that um, and to operate that. So. Uh, that's how the organization is structured. Uh, the last thing I want to talk about is what happened this last year in a new entity that Global Brigades just established. It's called Global Brigades Ventures. Uh, Global Brigades Ventures is a public benefit corporation in California. So what is a public benefit corporation? 
Some of you have, may have heard of the new regis legislation that was passed uh, in various states uh, coming from the B, B Corp. Um, B Corp is a, a social, basically the movement around legislating social enterprises. Without going into the details, I actually teach a class on the differences between, at University of Washington of the differences between uh, social enterprises and nonprofits. But in the end of the day, there's two main, main uh, things that, that, that you need to consider when you're talking about social purpose corporations. Is that one, what is the thing that they're similar to of nonprofits, and that's the mission. So the mission of Global Reads Ventures is the same mission as Global Reads Association, same as just Global Reads USA and Global Reads Ghana. The purpose of its funds and the, all of its operations go to the nonprofit. In fact, Global Reads Ventures is entirely owned by the nonprofit entities. Uh, it is not owned by any other individual uh, or other institution. It's 100% owned by the Global Reads Mission and the Global Reads uh, Collective Organization, meaning that any profit that it does receive does get ultimately dispersed into the, to the nonprofits for what? For two things. Uh, the sustainable exit, the same place that any of the extra surplus funds go from any of the other countries or the association. It goes into clean water projects uh, for and wells in, in communities that we couldn't do our water brigades in otherwise, and it goes into our capitalizing our community banks and supporting our microfinance infrastructure so that families have access to capital year-round to either finish the public health projects that the students were helping catalyze or be able to ha provide loans to families uh, to help support their small businesses. So that's where, that's where it ends up going. Uh, and that's the, the money flow uh, from that. That's why we set up Global Reads Ventures. The last reason why we set up Global Reads Ventures is for efficiency. Um, so what are, what are the operations of Global Reads Ventures? Global Reads Ventures has currently two main initiatives, uh, Empower.org and our travel agency. Uh, both of those two support not only the international uh, entities of uh, Global Reads, but other nonprofit organizations. The money that we receive from those other organizations and the Global Brigades go into, for those activities for Empower.org and the Travel Agency, go into the ventures and actually pay for uh, and, and the many of the employees that serve the Global Reads Association. That's another way that we decided to reduce administrative costs, was to actually employ, uh, for instance, myself uh, and other members of the uh, that work across the association on a more on an unofficial basis uh, that support the administrative function of the collective organization, moving those administrative costs into ventures, having their salaries be paid for by the for-profit, reduces the administrative costs of the association and of the international entities. The, with the ultimate goal for in the next three years to have 100% of our administrative costs covered by Global Reads Ventures and to grow it to that point. So that 100% of your donations and support and contributions goes into Ghana, Honduras, Panama, or Nicaragua. So that's Global Brigades organizational structure. If you have any questions, uh, you can email me at steve at globalbrigades.org. Again, steve at globalbrigades.org. I am extremely passionate about and proud of the model that we've developed over the last 10 years with a lot of guidance, a lot of legal support, a lot of help uh, from many professionals across the world. Uh, it's a very sophisticated model for a student-led movement but it's something that we're extremely proud of and something that created a level of, of efficiency that is really unseen uh, within the international nonprofit community. Thank you so much for your time today, and thanks again. Bye-bye.